Hi, my name is Fred Newman. I'm the owner of the View Camera Store. And recently in a video on the power dial, I was asked, how do you get the average gradient, G right here, versus developing time curve that was used with the power dial? Uh, this curve is also one of the curves imported with the Expo Dev software. So how do we get this curve? OK, what I do is I have a film testing service with the View Camera Store. And what I basically do is expose film of your choice, let's say HP5, TMAX 400, doesn't matter. Uh, I expose this with a calibrated light source and I do five sheets of film. And then I send the film off to you to be processed. And I can help you with film and developer combinations if you need some help. And basically you're going to do one sheet at four minutes, one at five and a half, one at eight, one at eleven, and one at sixteen minutes. The whole idea with the BTZS film testing, especially if you're using the BTZS tubes, this whole film test takes you less than one hour to do. So basically, I expose the film for you. You process the film these five different times. Send the film back to me. I read the densities with a densitometer. And you can see right here, the first one is the step tablet. This is the step tablet values that I actually use. And then these are the densities of your individual four, five and a half, eight, 11, and 16 minute curves. So the nice thing is the plotter program that I'm using here does all the work for us. So basically, I put the numbers in, and the plotter does everything. And we could see right here, in the family of film curves, you could see the 4 minute, the 5 and a half, the 8, the 11, and 16. And as you would figure out, probably, uh, the more developing time you do, the more density you have in your negative. And you can see 4 minutes, 5 and a half, 8, 11, and 16. You can see the increasing density in each of the curves. And what you want to see in a film test, if, it's, if you've done everything right, there should be a fairly equal spacing between each of these curves. And you can see that here. This was a test I did for Photo Techniques uh, when they first came out with TMAX 400 number 2. And you can see here on the family of details, this was done in back in um, April of 2008. And it was TMAX 400 number 2. And you can see all the basic information here. The film speed is 400. The developer I used was Ilford DDX. The dilution was 1 plus 9. It was 75 degrees is my temperature. Being in Arizona, it's kind of hard to get below that with, I would say, 85, 90 degree cold water in the summer. And as you know about the BTZS tubes, they take two ounces of the developer. And agitation is continuous using the tubes. And I put my little initials here so I know that the test was done by me. So one of the best curves to look at is the analyze curve. Now each of these curves here, let's do an individual curve so you can understand. These are actually the plot, actually it's better to go to this curve right here and let's get the points. All these data points are the actual points that you saw in the data. So if we go to select all, these are the data points of all five curves from four minutes through 16 minutes. And the nice thing is the computer pl plots each one of these points for you. So that gives you an idea of what you're looking at. Now, in the analyze curve here, let's go to display them all here, the family. You can see the four minute, the five and a half, the eight, the 11, and the 16. Now, I'm not going to go into how you actually calibrate the average gradient curve. It's kind of complicated. And the best way to do that would be to read Phil's book. In the old days, when, before we had the plotter program, when Phil Davis did the workshop, before I knew Phil even, uh, the workshop took about two weeks because everything was hand plotted, all the graphs were hand done, but now with the plotter program, it makes things life really simple and makes it really simple and no problems at all to do. So let's just look at the all the different curves that you get. This basically is a summary though. So the four minute, five and a half, eight, eleven, and sixteen, you can see the film speed is the next one. The average gradient is this number here. And the subject brightness range is this one here. So since we're mainly concerned with average gradient, we could see it increasing as the developing time increases. So let's look at the chart. So basically we have, let's start at the top, we have subject brightness range. Seven is our normal of SBR. And let's look at the average gradient chart here. So normally uh, 0 0.5 is your normal developing time. So that would be right about here. This is one of the curves that you're going to use for your power dial because the power dial does add flare. So you don't want to do anything with flare that you want to do where it says right here, flare is zero right here. There's no nothing entered in there. So if you have 0.5, you just go to the chart right here, and maybe it's 7 minutes and 10 seconds. And the same thing. So I say this, this chart does come from your test. Let's say you had an uh, average grade at 0.7. You go right to about, let's see, right about here. So we're about... 
10 minutes and 45 seconds. When you're doing this on your own, you, you might want to take a little ruler and be able to measure things exactly, but I'm just showing you for example. And let's say you had a point 0 0.4, 0 0.4, I'm sorry, and you'd go right to here, and you might be, let's say, 5 minutes and 5 seconds right about here. So you can interpolate all the different ones in here, but this is the main curve that you're going to need, and it does come from the BTZS film test. So as I say, you just need to expose. I expose the sheets for you. A lot of people like to do it on their own. I'm going to do a separate video on those people that want to do it on their own, and I'm also going to have... Um, if, you, if you're going to do it on your own from my calibrated light source, I can expose a couple of sheets of film for you. You could use as a standard when you adjust the uh, values to make sure you can match the, uh, the standard that I'm sending you. So it's a very simple thing. You do the BTZS film test. You develop this chart right from the plotter program. And I would say just save this chart. Keep it in your darkroom. So when you're out photographing, all you have to do is write down the number 0 0.6, 0 0.65, whatever the number is. When you get back to, when you get back to the darkroom, just... Uh, look at the numbers and then match them up to the sheet of film that has these particular numbers and then process the film. The advantage of this in using the BTZS tubes is if you had let's say five different average gradients 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0 0.8 you could process them all at the same time with the tube because you could do different developing times for each tube. So this is the main graph as I say if you're really interested in doing it it's kind of complicated um, to go through what average gradient how to get these charts uh, for those scientific people, you might want to read Phil's book. But for everybody else, I'd say just do the graph right from the plotter and it gives you all the information you need. Um, another thing is when you're doing the Expo Dev software, the average gradient um, versus developing time chart, the average gradient versus film speed chart right here, these are imported into your Expo Dev software that you use with the Palm Pilot. And the other thing, let me show you one other thing. And I'll go into into uh, reciprocity later. You'll see right here it says export to Expo Dev. And the nice thing is Phil did all the calibration for us. If you read Volume Nine, um, Issue One and Two, he did all the film tests. And then in Volume Nine, Issue Four of the DMAX newsletter, he calibrated reciprocities. And I'll go into that. But the nice thing about this is right here we click on Common Films, and let's go to 400 TMAX, right here with DDX. You can see it's a C6. So therefore, it's very simple. In other words, the average gradient versus developing time, the average gradient versus right here, the average gradient versus effective film speed, and your reciprocity information is exported right into the Expo Dev. So those are using Expo Dev, this is where it all comes from. And let me just show you a quick view of the charts. These are the charts that Phil did. You could see them in Volume 9, Issue Number 4. Now, this came from when he did the test. Phil actually exposed film for a tenth of a second, one second, ten seconds, a hundred seconds, and a thousand seconds. You can see right here. And all the numbers down here. And all he had to do was on the... Um, from the plotter program, count the number of squares, which were a third of a stop. So you can see an A film is about two stops loss. A B film is one, two, three stops loss. A C film is about three and two thirds. A D film is a bit more, and E and all that. So that's your A's come from there. And then your developing time change, this comes from looking at what a normal film test would look like, uh, and then what the difference is when you're doing reciprocity. A lot of times film will either increase in density when you have long exposures and decrease. But I will go over reciprocity in a whole other video. So again, let me close all this out. This all comes with this chart here right from the plotter program. And with the film testing service, you can be up and running very quickly. And it's a simple way to generate this chart. It doesn't take a lot of work. And you don't have to be a scientist to do this. You could do it as one of the, uh, I had a photographer in New York call it, just give me the numbers. And we could do it that way. You process the film. I read the numbers. And then I just send you all the charts. And this is the main chart that you're going to have when you're using the, the power dial. So I hope this helps me explain it a little bit. If you have more questions, just give me a call. I'll be glad to help you out or just send me an email. Thank you again for watching. And if you have more questions, I'll try to follow up like this when I have a chance. Thank you again. Bye.